Hello, this is John D. Callahan. Why is there something rather than nothing? And is there a God? And is it possible to know? First of all, why is there something? I don't know. To my mind, absolute nothingness makes more sense. But, here we are. There is existence. So my idea of what there should be is incorrect. Absolute nothingness makes sense to me. But that is not the case. We have existence. Therefore, it is hard to predict what the world is without going out and actually looking. One can theorize, but then one must test one's theory against what is actually observed. The next question is, is there a God? Well, if there's not a God, we have a existence without intelligence. But yet, there is a great design in the universe. And... It is not infinite. It, infinity does not make sense for the universe because where would it expand into? There's nothing to expand into. It's infinite everywhere. And it had a beginning, the Big Bang. Now, one could say it oscillates, but that doesn't make sense. It's pushing itself farther and farther Away. So there was a moment of creation. One could argue also that there are many multi-universes in a quantum foam, I believe is a popular term, where there are many expansions, but it still comes to the same question. The universe is finite and it had a beginning. That must have been a supernatural event because energy cannot be created nor destroyed. But we have energy, we have something coming into existence at the Big Bang or in other multi-universes. So there is a finite nature to the universe, but at the same time, it is unimaginably complex and unimaginably vast, so much so that it, it is, one can almost argue it's infinite, but infinite is a different paradigm altogether because no matter how great something is, it is zero compared to infinity or it is infinitesimal compared to infinity, no matter you squared the universe, you multiple raised the universe to the universe power, it's still nothing compared to infinity. And um, again, let's think about the vastness of the universe. A hundred billion galaxies with a hundred billion stars. There are more stars in the universe, the observable universe, than there are grains of sand on all the beaches in the um, in the universe, in the on Earth. And that's just the observable universe. The unobservable universe is estimated to be at least a hundred times larger, and it could be as many as 10 to the 23rd. In other words, the observable universe could be to the entire universe as an atom is to the observable universe. So, but again, infinity is a different paradigm. That whole thing could be raised to its own power and it's still nothing. So, but it's finite. If it's infinite, it doesn't make any sense. It can't expand into, into infinity. It's, it's finite. It had a moment of creation and it's finite but unimaginably vast. So the next question is, again, is there a God or 
is do we have this vast, unimaginably complex? Now, as far as the com how complex we have, we have we have subatomic particles made of quarks, and then we have atoms with quantum states that are defined in complex mathematical terms, which then make molecules, which then make cells, and the complexity at each of these states stages are unimaginable. Once again, we go back to infinity. It's nothing compared to infinity. As vast as that is, as unimaginably complex as that is. And the human body is trillions of cells, and there's all of us. It's unimaginable. And the local universe, the local group, of galaxies, which is gravitationally bound, is just a tiny fraction of the entire universe. Uh, billions, billions of billions, I can't, I'm sorry, I apologize, I don't know the exact number, but it's a tiny fraction of the observable of the universe. And think how vast it is with the Andromeda galaxy and the dozens of um, dwarf galaxies, which by the way will condense into an, an elliptical galaxy because we're gravitationally bound in a local group, while the other, the other groups will continue to fly away until there'll be one elliptical galaxy and we won't be able to see anything. Uh, one elliptical galaxy in the local group and we won't be able to see anything else. So we're, we're kind of in a unique beginning part of the universe where we can have a lot of understanding of it. Now, so we have that there is existence, there's something, which again doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and then we go out and observe it, we see something that is unimaginable in its complexness and vastness, but finite. So did it create itself? That's, is there no intelligence behind this incredibly complex, vast universe, which does contain intelligence within it? Um, we dare call ourselves intelligent. So, again, now, is there a God? I don't think you can say one way or the other. You can theorize, just as you can theorize that there shouldn't be anything, as I did, but yet there is. So, you have to, in the same way, go out and look. Is there existence for a God? Is he infinite? which I believe makes sense, that he would be the infinite intelligence behind this finite creation, which is so unimaginable, I mean, vast and complex, um, that it's just beyond. But anyway, you have to go out and look. I don't think you can say there's no God. Uh, just in the same way you can say there shouldn't be existence. There is existence. So is there, is there a God? Now, can we know? Again, the same thing is you can theorize, no, we can't know. But we have to go out and look. We have to test that theory. Can we find evidence for the existence of God, which is a completely valid um, proposition? And we don't know. We have to go out and look. And if you go out and look, there is, in my opinion, and it is a very emotional issue, so people are going to have a hard time agreeing, although they do seem, in the consensus, this seems to be that, yes, there is a God. I mean, you have all the major religions, say there is a God. I mean, there's a God behind Christianity, obviously, Judaism, and Islam. There's a God. Um, in Sikh, there's a God. So there's a consensus there that there is a God. Exactly what his nature is, is questionable. But again, the consensus is that he's the infinite creator. But can, can we show that? And I believe there is evidence, there is evidence for the existence of God. And it makes the most sense when you look at, you look at it. One of my um, 
good friends at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory when I worked there, one of the most intelligent people I've ever met in my life, who graduated from Caltech and went on to get his PhD in astronomy. He was a Christian. He fully accepted science the way I do. He once said that he'll, uh, he'll believe in creationism when, when the trees stand up and clap. In other words, he fully accepted the secular scientific view of evolution. But at the same time, I believe he was Episcopal. I do not remember exactly. But at the same time, he was a Christian since he was a small child. He grew up in a Christian home, a Christian church. And he said to me once, that I'll never, I'll never turn away because I've seen too much. In other words, he's seen too much evidence for the existence of God. Now, it may not be the raising of the dead, but there are so many subtle signs, and even more than subtle, in the working of God in one's life and in the world around us, and that we have to come to the conclusion that there is a God. And I, of course, believe in the personal, personal relationship of Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and believe in him as deity. There have been many examples in my own life of God's power, of his conviction, of me seeing him work in my life, his conviction to pray, caused me to pray, the conviction of knowledge that he's given me about situations and what direction I should go in my life. As far as great miracles, seeing someone raised from the dead, no, I haven't seen, seen things like that, but I've seen the power of God. I mean, I would say one of the most striking um, examples of the power of God is I was up once... Um, observing with my telescope in Mount Palomar, and I was debating whether to go on and get a PhD in astronomy. And I wanted to do that, but I, I felt God didn't want me to do that, and I wasn't really listening or paying attention to God. And it turns out that I was running my telescope off the battery of my car, and my car battery was dead, and I went to leave, and the, the battery was dead in the car, and it was about... 30 degrees out, and I, uh, there was very little energy left in the car, and I prayed to God to start the car, a little young and kind of naive in those days, and um, I played very hard, and I went to start, and I had the conviction that God had answered my prayer any, in the sense that it was time to stop praying he was going to do whatever he did, and then I had made myself right with God, and I told him whatever he wants in my life that I'd be willing to do. And I went to uh, start the car, and it just, as it had a few other times, the engine had not fired the whole time. It just went brr, brr, and then it stopped. Well, brr, 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 and then it would stop as the engine was trying to turn over. So I held the key. It went brrrr, and it, I was going to stop the engine to try to save what little energy there was in the battery, but God told me not to. And in my own mind and my own wisdom, I would have not continued to try to start the car, hold the key down with my foot on the accelerator. But God told me, it was my own personal conviction that God told me not to against my own better my own judgment. So you probably guess the engine turned one more time and it's probably the only time it had, would have turned over perhaps the rest of the night and the whole engine ignited and the car started. Now, did he supernaturally start the car? I don't know, but he supernaturally convicted me not to let up on the gas. And I have, there's many examples, maybe not quite as dramatic of that as God working. I'll give you one other small example. My cousin died of AIDS in the 80s, and he studied to become a priest and became sacrilegious, um, fell away from God, came back towards, to God towards the end of his life when it's obvious he was going to die from AIDS. 
And I was talking with him towards the end of his life. And he told me a story where God was a giant figure like the Statue of Liberty because it was actually around the time, this was in a dream, actually around the time of the Bicentennial, I believe, or uh, what was 1986? I guess it was, it had been eight, 1986. So anyway, he told me this story that Jesus was a giant statue and he asked Martin, that was his name, whether he would like to sleep with him that night. And Martin was just a small figure in front of this giant figure of Jesus. Now, Martin had AIDS, and every night he would wake up in a horrible sweat um, because he was dying and he had a pneumonia, some kind of illness. Like he'd, he'd wake up in a horrible sweat, and he'd change, have to change his clothes. And that night he said yes, and Martin walked into the hands of the giant Jesus and Jesus closed his hands. Jesus said, do you want to sleep with me tonight? And Martin said, yes. And so he closed his hands and Martin slept perfectly throughout the whole night. So those are just, those are just a few examples, some somewhat dramatic, but there are many examples of God guiding me, God, God, God guiding me in other manners, of other examples. And again, I gave you the example of one of the most intelligent people I've ever met in my life. So, Again, there is existence. Why is there something? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me, but there is something. Second is unimaginably complex and vast. It's, to our minds, it seems infinite, but again, infinite is a different paradigm. You raise, you raise as vast as the universe is, you can keep raising it to the same power. You can raise the universe to the universe in power. It's still nothing compared to infinity. It's a different paradigm. The universe is unimaginable. The observable, the unobservable universe, the complexity of the, of the subatomic particles through the building structure, the atoms and molecules and cells in our bodies, it's unimaginable. Um, and then the observable, the, unobs the observable, but there, we can't predict what it's going to be. We must go out and look. In the same way, you can theorize there's no God, but you need to go out and look. And the evidence, although people would argue you can't find God, there is no evidence, that's just a theory. You go out and look. I believe in my opinion and in, in the opinion and the consensus of mankind, there is a God. Thank you.